Detroit is about to make history. Five skyscrapers at the Renaissance Center, towering between 159 and 222 meters, are set to be demolished in what would be the largest voluntary skyscraper demolition ever. For nearly 30 years, this complex has been the headquarters of General Motors, a strong symbol of the city's strength and car-making history. But in 2024, GM announced it was leaving, walking away from the Renson and setting off a $1.6 billion redevelopment plan. The plan? Tear down five of its main towers, turn the rest into housing, and reshape the riverfront. With hundreds of millions in public money at stake, debate is heating up. Critics call it a careless destruction of history, while supporters say Detroit must change to stay alive. But why would a city willingly tear down its most famous corporate landmark? To understand the weight of GM's departure and the proposed redevelopment, we need to journey back to the 1970s. Detroit, once the roaring heart of America's automotive industry, was in decline. The city's population had plummeted from its peak of nearly 2 million in 1950 to 1.5 million by 1970. Economic downturns, racial tensions, and suburban migration had left Detroit struggling. The 1967 Detroit Uprising had accelerated what's known as white flight, a mass exodus of white residents to the suburbs, driven by racial tensions economic uncertainty, and declining city services. By the late 1980s, the city's population had dropped even further, to 1.2 million, marking a staggering 36% decline from its peak. Amid this downturn, Henry Ford II, the grandson of legendary Henry Ford, set out to change the city's direction. Determined to revive Detroit's struggling economy, Ford led an ambitious project, the Renaissance Center, with strong support from the city's mayor and a group of 26 business leaders. Ford formed the Detroit Renaissance Group to manage the project. Construction began on what would become the world's largest private development at the time. The price tag? A huge $500 million in 1971 equal to nearly 3.9 billion today. Over 40 companies, including Ford's rival Chrysler, invested in the project, showing a rare moment of unity in Detroit's business world. Called a city within a city, the Renson opened its first phase on July 1, 1976. The complex featured five round towers covered in 186,000 square meters of glass and built with 305,820 cubic meters of concrete and over 40,000 tons of steel. At its core stood a 222-meter, 73-story central tower housing the Detroit Plaza Hotel, which became the tallest all-hotel skyscraper in the world at the time. Surrounding it were four 159-meter, 39-story office towers offering 204,000 square meters of office space and 61,000 square meters of retail. The central tower's diameter was an impressive 57 meters, and a glass walkway surrounded its base, creating a unique architectural feature. In 1996, General Motors bought the Renson for $73 million moving its global headquarters there and spending $500 million on renovations, equal to about $900 million today. GM's upgrades included the Winter Garden, a five-story glass atrium that connected the complex to the Detroit riverfront, opening up the previously closed-off structure to the city. The Renson became a symbol of Detroit's hoped-for comeback, a shining sign of the city's strength. The renovations also included a 3.7-meter suspended walkway, making it easier to navigate the complex's maze-like interior. Despite its challenges, the Renson remained the most recognizable part of Detroit's skyline, representing both the city's past struggles and its ongoing fight for renewal. 
Fast forward to April 15, 2024. GM made a shocking announcement. They were moving their global headquarters from the iconic Renaissance Center to the brand new Hudson's Detroit development. But why would GM walk away from a building they owned, a tower that had been their home for decades? The answer lies in changing work habits and economic realities. The COVID-19 pandemic rewrote the rules of office life. Remote work, once a rare perk, became the norm. Many companies, even the biggest ones, started using less office space. By 2024, the numbers spoke for themselves. Detroit's office vacancy rate had jumped to 25%, one of the highest in the nation. The Renson, once filled with over 10,000 workers every day, was now a shadow of its former self. On an average day, only 20% of its pre-pandemic workforce showed up. Even visitor numbers had dropped to just 38.5% of what they had been in 2019. Businesses inside the complex felt the impact. Empty hallways, quiet lobbies, a space designed for thousands, now struggling to stay relevant. For GM, staying in the Renson no longer made sense. They needed a space that matched how people work now. CEO Mary Barra put it plainly, we're proud to remain in the city of Detroit in a modern office building that fits the evolving needs of our workforce. The new Hudson's Detroit development, a 1.4 billion mixed use project offered just that. Located on the former site of the iconic JL Hudson's flagship store, the development features a 209 meter skyscraper set to become the second tallest building in both Detroit and Michigan, and a 12-story office building. The Hudson site is rich in history. The original department store, once the tallest in the world, was demolished in 1998, in the largest controlled implosion of its time. GM will lease the top office floors of the 12-story building, under a 15-year agreement with plans to use the ground floor for a public showroom, displaying their latest vehicles. The new headquarters promises modern features, flexible workspaces, and a prime location in the heart of downtown Detroit. The development also includes stores, apartments, and event spaces, making it a lively place for both work and leisure. The move fits GM's goal of a modern, sustainable workspace designed to attract top talent and encourage new ideas. However, GM's move leaves behind a massive question mark over the future of the Renaissance Center. While GM will keep ownership of the Renson, their focus is shifting toward their new headquarters. So, what happens next for the Renaissance Center? The plan includes the demolition of the two riverfront towers, Tower 300 and Tower 400, to open up access to the Detroit River. The center tower, currently housing the Marriott Hotel, will remain, but with significant changes. The hotel's capacity will be reduced from approximately 1,200 rooms to around 850 with the upper floors converted into 200 luxury family apartments. Meanwhile, one of the remaining nearby towers will be converted into 300 to 400 residential units, bringing new life and new residents to the complex. The other will get a renovation but remain an office space. Beyond that, the plan calls for expanded public spaces, entertainment venues, and an improved riverfront designed to make the area a more lively place for both locals and visitors. If everything moves forward as planned, demolition could begin within two years, followed by another 2.5 to 3 years of construction. But for now, the plan is just that, a plan. The biggest challenge? Getting the financing to make it happen. The 1.6 billion price tag for the Renaissance Center's redevelopment has started fierce debate, especially over the push for public funding. GM and Bedrock have promised 1.25 billion, with Bedrock contributing 1 billion, and GM adding 250 million. But they're also seeking 250 million 
in state subsidies and 100 million in tax increment financing from the Detroit Downtown Development Authority. Critics call it a slap in the face to taxpayers, arguing it's ridiculous to fund the demolition of a landmark, especially when GM is moving its headquarters. One Michigan House representative called the request disrespectful, noting that GM previously received state tax credits in 2009 to keep jobs at the Renson, only for many of those employees to be relocated to GM's Warren Tech Center. Supporters, however, argue that the project is necessary for Detroit's future. Real estate experts say the Renson, as it stands, is not practical, too big, too outdated, and not right for modern office needs. Without big changes, it risks becoming an empty eyesore on Detroit's skyline. In response to the pushback, GM and Bedrock insist they'll move forward with or without public funds. Some call this a strong stance, others call it unfair pressure. If the plan proceeds, the demolition of the five primary towers would be the largest planned skyscraper demolition in history. A rare move for structurally sound buildings. To calm worries, GM has promised to direct any profits from the redevelopment into Detroit education. But Bedrock, the project's biggest financial player, hasn't made the same promise. The Renson's future is uncertain. The decisions made in the coming months won't just change the future of an iconic landmark. They'll change Detroit's future. Will the Renaissance Center get its own rebirth? Or will it fade into history? The city waits. What do you think? Should Detroit demolish the Renson or preserve its history? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications.